How many of you are believing for something bigger this year? And so, yeah, I kind of, you know, you want to go through the, the, all the ab libs of a new year and all that kind of deal. Pastor Walt did a great job online last week of kind of taking us entering into a new year. But, but I want to say something following that atmosphere right there is that, you know, we're talking about, miracle, you know, the way maker, the, the, you know, he is a miracle worker. I believe this year that God is, is wanting people not only to get a hold of a new year, but to get a hold of a better plan. And Pastor Walt said something to me several years ago, which he, 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 I thought was really powerful. And he, and he made a statement. And he said, he said, I quit saying to people, your best days are ahead. He said, because everybody else is on such a, a different track of life. He said, what I started saying is there's blessed days ahead. And, and what that means is there's so many people in the room today and, and in our church and watching online this morning. You're all on a journey. You're all on a, on a destination of, of your path for discipleship. And, uh, you know, and, and one thing I want to say following coming out of that is that, you know, don't get, don't get locked in on just, hey, uh, 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 we're just going to be repetitive or Christian antics or, or the, you know, I say this, I'm going to get this. Attach yourself to that word that Pastor Daniel was talking about because it's a living word. And uh, the word is alive. It's, the Bible says that it's sharp. And so I want to encourage you. That I felt like the Lord said this to me during, during uh, worship right there at the end and and, uh, and it just kind of got a hold of me, so I'm just going to go with it this morning. But don't speak against what God's working on in your life. Don't speak against what God is working on in your life because a lot of times, you know, we just sang about it. Even though we can't see it, he's moving. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago that, that even there are times that it's clear God is doing something powerful. There's times where, you know, you, you feel it, you see it, you're moving in it. But then there's also times where you don't have a clear picture exactly of, of how the outcome's going to be. Are you with me here this morning? And uh, listen to me. So, you know, we were, I was in a conference a couple of months ago, and one of the things that stood out is a guy was talking, and he said, he said, even when you can't see it, God is still doing something. And a lot of times is, is what we want to get a hold of is a better plan. Everybody say better plan. And, you know, Pastor did a great job online of walking us through examining ourselves that we're going into a different type of year, a year of, of rest, but, but at the same time, it's a year of working, it's a year of progressing, it's a year of, of evaluating and moving forward in the things that God's calling you to do. Uh, some things that were stirring in me coming out of the end of the year was, was really a strong word on faith, that God operates a couple, you know, there's a difference between faith and determination. And so I encourage you this year, don't just go into a new year, into 2022, with just determination, hey, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this, and you know those things are okay. But there's a difference between faith and determination. God ta taught you to walk in faith and endurance, not just determination. Determination will take you where you want to go. Faith will take you to where God wants you to go. Come on, how many of you want to go where God wants you to go? And and I know that's not good hype preaching, but I'm not a hype preacher. Come on, we're we're a we're a life church connected to what God's doing. And God has a, has a powerful system, and, and, and we talked about it. Uh, Pastor Daniel did a great job of talking about it. Hey, embrace the Word of God because it's alive. Amen? And so, you know, we're in a new year, but the reality is even though we're in a new year and we're going to do a lot of different things and things are going to be better, there's going to still be some things that we're going to see that are the same, right? And there's always monotony in every year. I'd like to give you all the hype that th for the next 365 days, the glory of God's going to get hit. You're never going to have another problem. All your employees are going to come up, sh show up every day singing, you are my sunshine. You know, you're, 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 you're going to wake up and not have to brush your teeth. Come on, somebody. You know, I'd like to tell you that, that there's not going to be hot days, cold days, and, and those kind of things. But the reality is in 2022, we're still going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. And, and we're still going to have to put our pants on. on. We're still going to have to go to work. Come on, somebody. Ladies, you're still going to have to do your makeup. I mean, it, it's just part of the process. And, and we're going to deal with some sickness. We're going to deal with some disease. We're going to deal with some, some things that we don't understand. But one thing that we do understand, come on, is that when we walk by faith and not by sight, we please our Heavenly Father. And, and, and so we attach ourselves to that. And so... I believe that as, as we get into the new year and you establish a better plan, sometimes people, they're great in the journey of walking into, into the life of God and loving God, worshiping God, but, but it's easy to sometimes kind of get in a, in a mode of, hey, I don't have to do any planning. God's going to do everything for me. And how many of you know, if you've heard Pastor Walt preach for five minutes, 
That's not the path, come on, that we walk and follow here at the Life Church. God gives you, God, the Bible says that your heart plans your way, but God orders your steps. And so planning is, a, is an instrumental part of your life. And so I, I, I've been around church a long time. I'm 46 years old. I'm not going to give you a list on how to lose weight and how to eat less calories and all that kind of thing today. What I'm, I'm going to challenge you on today is to simplify your walk with Jesus, to get a better plan, to simplify your walk with Christ. And so because the reality is, uh, God's not difficult. He's not hard to find. He, he's right there, available. The, he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's working on your behalf. A lot of times we, we, we make it more complex than it is. How many of you know Jesus is the Savior? He went to the cross. He came back. He sent the Holy Spirit so that we could have the abundant life that he came to give us. He sent the Holy Spirit, the scripture says, to guide us into all truth. And so if it's the truth we, we receive and we know that makes us free, how many of you know this, this is lining up fairly, uh, I'm not going to say easy because Jesus had to give his life for it, but living for God doesn't have to be as hard as we, we have a tendency to make it. We want to make things complex as human beings. Uh, it's kind of part of our DNA because then if we accomplish it, we look like the smartest people in the room. And so one thing that I, I, I've learned in my life is we, we, as Christians, our job isn't to be the smartest people in the room. Our job isn't to be the standout. Our job is to be those who simply believe what God says. Come on, walk it out in our lives. Let the light of God shine off of our lives. Come on, so that he gets the credit. Because there's only one that, 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 there's only one that can change anyone. Come on, and that's Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. And so we simplify the plan. We do something different. I, I like the word uh, to, to, to simplify. It simply means to make simple. It, may, it, it, it means to make it easier to understand. Parents, make it easier to understand. That's what we do. Uh, employers, make it easier to understand. Here's where we're at. Here's where we're going. Here's how we're going to do it. Come on, somebody. And so there's no, there's no excuses in that. There's no, there's no gap in that. It's simply saying, hey, we're, t we're looking at our lives from where we are today to where we're going. Well, here's our plan. We're going to get a better plan. It's going to be a simple plan, and we're going to execute our plan. And as we, as we walk that out, God, because you're walking it out in faith, God begins to op op uh, open up the steps to you. Come on, somebody. And so as you're walking through the process, you, 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 you know, something will happen in life, and all of a sudden your steps will change. Your plan doesn't mean that God doesn't honor your plan. It means as you step out, you're walking out, you're stepping out in blind faith, but God has a new relationship over here, a new pathway over here, or somebody he's connecting you to, and he will shift your steps along the way to make sure that you're on the right path. And so we plan our ways, but God directs our steps and, and as, we, as we become more vulnerable to that and okay with that, then God will take you places. Come on, the scripture says he'll do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that you can ask or think. And it doesn't mean we're not going to face the battles. It doesn't mean there's not going to be tribulation. We just understand that we're walking this plan out. We have a plan in our lives. Come on. And it's a better plan. And, and I believe that God wants you to have a better life. Not all of us are going to be famous. We're not all going to be on TV. We're not all going to, you know, faith, you know, become the greatest rock stars in life and that kind of thing. And that's okay. We all have a destiny, though, and we're all called to have a better life. I said we're all called to have a better life. And so in that process, I've attached myself. In, in, in Hosea chapter 4, uh, verse 6, I'm going to read out of the Amplified again. I've been in the Amplified a little bit here lately and kind of enjoying it. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge of my law where I reveal my will. That's powerful. He says, because you, the priestly nation, have rejected the knowledge, I will also reject you uh, from being my priest since you have forgotten the law of God. I will also forget your children. Now, we know this is Old Testament. We know that we're in the new covenant. But how many of you know God still has a will? And the word of God is where God reveals his will. His word and his will are one. Everybody say his word and his will are one. You can't separate God. I love what Pastor Daniel was saying there. You, you can't separate God from his word. He's bound to his word. And it's through his word that he uh, reveals his will for your life. And so, you know, looking at that, I love the way he says that. He said, I will reveal my will. But why are people destroyed? Because of a lack of knowledge. Because, because they're, they, they haven't truly tapped in. Come on. 
to the life of the Word of God. And so when you get grounded in the Word, Matthew 7, Jesus said it this way. He said, those that hear my sayings and do my sayings, he said, I will liken to a wise man who built his house, come on, on the rock. And when your house is built on the rock, then, then emotion and, and turmoil and all those things that come at you, uh, you know, the, the bad news and the, you know, the anger and all the things that come at you, it, it doesn't sway you like it used to because you have a foundation that you're building on. And as we build on that foundation based on, it starts with the Word of God. Jesus said, those that hear and do my sayings, come on, how many of you know there's some knowledge in that? And he said, my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. And I'm not here to, to make anybody feel bad about themselves. Listen, I've lived some bad knowledge years in my life. I've walked away from, from God for a time. I've been through those, those scenarios where everybody else is telling you, hey, you just got to do this, but my heart just wasn't there yet. Are you with me? And so, but one thing I've learned is, listen, I might have walked away from God, but he never walked away from me. And he's faithful. He's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And so, uh, you know, you get to talking to people in general. Can I just pass to you a little bit this morning? If you've been saved a long time, just enjoy what I say. If you haven't, get a hold of what I'm about to say because it'll change your life, right? But there's two, kind of two things that people struggle with that I, that I see that where they're in their walk with God in general. One is, is circumstances are too hard. I, I can't do this. Every time I step out, you know, the circumstances, how's it going? Well, you know, uh, within the circumstances, everything's okay. And everything is kind of circumstantial, Todd, uh, circumstances, Todd. And so it kind of emotion is attached to that. And so what you're saying when you say that is, is whatever happens tomorrow is going to sway my decision on how I'm going to live. And so if it's, you know, if something bad happens, you know, it's just circumstance. If, and so we, we get in this circumstance mindset. Listen to me. For the next 365 days, we're going to deal with some circumstances. The good news is you're not under the circumstances. I said the good news is you're not under the circumstances. Because how many of you know, we, we walk in, in faith walking, come on, there's always victory. And so we may deal with circumstances, but we're not, we're not living under the circumstances because God is operating in our lives. He's working on our behalf, right? Even we, when we can't see it. So if I'm walking by faith and I want to simplify my walk with God, listen to me, I can't talk against what God's trying to do. And, and I said it a while ago, don't talk against what God, all the things that when God is working on your behalf, just because you don't understand it just doesn't, doesn't mean that he's not working. Just because a person isn't changing the way that you think that they should doesn't mean that God's not working. Just because things didn't take off on the day that you thought it should take off doesn't mean that God is not working. Sometimes we just need to shut our mouths, come on somebody, and give God credit that he's a little bit smarter than we are. And so in the process, so I don't want to talk against, if I'm simplifying my faith, I'm going to attach myself to the Word of God, the Word, you know, I'm going to live by the Word of God, I make decisions by the Word of God, I'm going to stir up, I'm going to speak the Word of God, but, but I'm not going to make decisions. Even on our staff, we've got to the place in our, time, in, our, in our meetings and stuff, we'll allow feedback, but we don't allow complaining. Because we want to achieve the things that God's put in our heart, so we're not going to be. So we, we decided we're not going to be a complaining culture. If you want to, if you want to complain, come on. Wendy's is hiring. Come on, somebody. And so in complaining, so we simplify the things that God in, in our life. We simplify the plan. And in that mode, what happens is, we, so it, it's real simple in my life. I want to attach myself to the Word of God, and then I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk against. I don't want to speak. Uh, uh, speak against the things that God's trying to do that I can't clearly see. And so, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to talk against potential. I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk against that, that, you know, that, that we're believing for growth. You know, Daniel said it during worship, there's a move of God, and God's going to do some things here in San Angelo. I believe that. Let's speak that. Come on, somebody. Pastor Walt believes that. Let's connect to that. We believe that somebody today is going to give their life to Jesus. We believe this year marriages will be restored. Hearts will be changed. Lives will be touched. We believe, that, we believe today that, that people will get a new vision, a new plan. They'll begin to dream again. We'll believe those that lost hope will regain a new hope. And that, that, that deferred hope won't cost them their lives. Come on, somebody. And so, you know, you start, you start speaking the word, and all of a sudden, things look different. We can do all things in the will of God that God has for us to do. 
We can walk by faith. We can go to more nations. We can see our children rise up and do something bigger, come on, than we ever thought about doing. We can overcome the limitations of our past. We can overcome our negative thinking or our bad habits or the things that have been shutting us down. I'm telling you, with God, all things are possible. That is true. Come on. And, and, but it's up to us to activate that. And when you activate it, just, you know, I'm not saying be religious about it, but don't speak against what God's trying to accomplish. And so stay on your mission. Decide, I'm not going to be a complainer. I'm going to be a person who gets grounded in the Word of God, the will of God. I'm going to walk this thing out. I'm not under the circumstances. I may go through circumstances, but I'm coming out of the storms. I'm coming out of the things that are trying to shut me down. Listen to me, we don't just sing about the miracle worker and then go back out on Monday and talk against it. Listen to me, if he's the way maker on Sunday morning, I'm telling you right now, he's the way maker on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. When it's 21 degrees outside, come on, how many of you wish you were in a deer blind this morning? I almost, almost tried to pull double duty, I didn't because I wanted to be focused. And so I slept in a little later just to just let the Lord kind of work on me a little bit. My wife came in there and said, it's 8.20. I said, I'm in divine sleep. Don't talk to me. I got to speak to the people today. Something big's happening. And so th that's not true. And uh, none of that was true. Except for I did, I did sleep to 8.20. Pastor Walt, I'm sorry, but I was sleeping good this morning. And so I don't want to be destroyed by a lack of knowledge. We don't want you to be destroyed by a lack of knowledge. We don't want your children to be destroyed by a lack of knowledge God has a simple plan. Come on, attach yourself to the will of God. Let's eliminate some things. Let's get rid of the complaining. Let's bring in a little focus. Everybody say focus. I like to call it laser focus, where we, we're focusing in. And if God changes the steps on the way, that's okay. We're okay with that. But we're, we're focusing in to saying, hey, here's the intent of my heart, and here's where we're going. And, and as we walk that out with some laser focus in there, I believe that, you know, some tr strategic planning, you know, I, I'm so uh, proud of our staff. Listen to me. We didn't wait till January 1st to plan out 2022. I'm very excited about our team and our staff and our, our leaders here. Come on, we, got, we have the semester planned out. Our staff has it planned out. We're about to reach some people here in San Angelo. And you're, a big, you're making that happen. And so we got groups coming. We got classes coming. Uh, we got things in order within our children's uh, uh, department, worship department. You name it, we're doing it. Uh, and and I'm, just, I'm extremely proud of our staff and our team. And, you know, from, from Pastor Walt to the rest of the team on how, we're, how we did it this year, we're more ahead this year than we've ever been in the history as far as we know, right? And, uh, and that's exciting. And so, so, but we're not under the circumstances. Now, come Wednesday, we may get some news of something we didn't see coming. We're still not under the circumstances. We're going to walk this thing out by faith, right? And so, so that's kind of a thought where people struggle with, well, you know, these circumstances, these things I'm dealing with, listen to them. You were dealing with them when you weren't serving Jesus. This is just circumstances, right? And so, so why, why, you know, it, now you have victory over those things. Let, 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 you know, let God work some things out in that process for you. That's the number one thought that I think people struggle with is just, you know, there's too many things coming at me, too many circumstances. And the other, can I get real simple this morning? And, and, and Pastor Walton, come back and clean all this up. Come on, somebody. But uh, uh, the, the, the second thought is, is that people just have a tendency to think, and I get it, I do, I get it, is the Bible's just too hard to understand. I can't memorize, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't get this. And I, and I get that. I, I get the thought behind it. I don't agree with it. Because if I were to say, all oh, my exes, you would say, you got that memorized, Jack. Come on, bro. Or if I would say, some sweet home. See, and the Lord's like, I told you you could do this. Come on. And so we can learn. And we can memorize. If, if I were to say, if you like it, then you should have put a, oh, y'all are good, I'm telling you. <laughs> and so, you know, you get this course of things we can learn. And, and if all you learn is what culture teaches you, there could be devastating endings to that. There could be lack of knowledge endings to that. But if we'll take this simple word of God that the Bible says came to confuse the wise, that's how simple it is. It came to confuse the wise. And so if we'll take and build our lives on this simple word that God has for us, which is you can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can go on and on and on in Scripture. 
And, 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 we, and, we, and we get a hold of that simple concept. Now we're building on something, come on, that has lasting value. Because how many of you know the neon moon didn't do it for you? And how many of you know all the exes in Texas, they didn't do it for you? How many of you know Sweet Home Alabama is the greatest song and movie as that is? And ladies, I know you love it. That's not the thing that's going to do it for you. Can I tell you what's going to do it for you? It's, re it's realizing, come on, the power of Jesus who saw love in advance, gave his life for you, come on, came and took the punishment, became grounded, took the punishment, died, was resurrected, sent back the Holy Spirit so that you can walk out the will of God in your life. Each and every one of you have a purpose, you have a destiny, and if you want it to last, listen to me, then build, I started to say something funny right there, I'm glad I didn't, build your life on the rock. Come on, somebody. Build your life on the rock. And so people are destroyed many times, not because, not because things can't change, they just don't necessarily know how to put in the effort, come on, to learn. And so how do I learn scripture? Well, you learn it the same way we just did this morning, you sing about it. You learn it through reading the Bible. Come on, get you some note cards. Throw them on your mirror. Come on, find, get a word that you love in your heart. Begin to speak it. Can we go back to just basic roots of what it means to be connected with God's purpose? And I'm not saying take 400 scriptures in the book of Revelation either. Stay away from that. Come on. Particularly if you just got saved. That's going to be trouble for all of us, and I don't have time. Come on. We get emails. We need to do a series on the book of Revelation. Hey, when God says to do that, we'll do that. Come on, somebody. But today we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Today we're going to speak the word. Today we're going to stay clear. Today we're going to eliminate complaining. Today we're going to walk this thing out. We're going to do something different. Get a hold of something new and walk it out. So let's get rid of the myth, come on, that I'm under the circumstances. And let's get rid of the myth this morning that I can't learn that the Bible is too difficult. God has ways. Come on, somebody. If God, if God said faith comes by hearing the word, then we need to hear some words. And, that, and those are the things that are going to activate. Are you with me here this morning? Number two is really powerful. Number two this morning is don't give up on love. Don't give up on love. And I talked about this a little bit a couple of weeks ago, but there's something powerful about that. There's two things. In the Old Testament or in the, the Garden of, of Eden, there was, he said, I'm gonna, I can give you all these things as yours. The, 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 the full garden is yours to tend and keep. He said, but there's one thing. One thing that you don't, I'm asking you not to touch, am I right? And so we know the story they go on, and, and the one thing they couldn't touch is the one thing they had to have, and it ended up happening. Well, I believe in the, in the New Testament, I believe in, in our walk with God under the new covenant, under, the, under this kingdom, I believe there's one thing that he tells us not to give up on. Not, he says, you can, I'm going to bless you, you're going to live the abundant life, you go through the scriptures, you can do all things through Christ who strengthen you. Uh, you go through all of those powerful promises, but one thing that God's going to tell you to do is to never give up on love. Because the scripture says love answers all things. It's the one constant in our life. Listen. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in the Amplified, it says this. It says, love bears up uh, under anything and everything that comes. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. And so, you know, I talked about this as well a couple weeks ago. If you paint a house, how many of you know in about 10 to 15 years that house is going to fade? The colors are going to fade. You can put a pretty blue. They're going to fade out, turn to dust, and, and, and that's where it ends. The scripture says here the love of God is fadeless. When God painted the picture in the crimson red that we talked about during worship, when God painted that picture, that is a fadeless color. Come on. That is a fadeless love. It's not going away. It's not buried under circumstances. Come on, somebody. The love of God is active. It's moving forward, and it's working on your behalf. And so don't give up on love. Listen to me. And understanding here, there's a difference between a soulish attention to love and agape kind of love. We understand that. The difference between attract, being attracted to somebody and then, and then the love of God. Are you with me? And so in that process, attach yourself. Maybe you've been brokenhearted in the past. Maybe things have happened to you that have affected the way that you receive love or that you give love. I'm telling you today, open your heart to let the agape kind of love come on the inside, the God kind of love come on the inside of you and stir you up, come on, to live again. And so don't turn away from the love of God. We embrace the love of God. 
because it's not going anywhere. And I, and I understand we all have different pasts, and, and, and we have different past. You know, Pastor said it in, the, in, his, in his online service, to start a new year, sometimes we got to leave our past in the past. But we, we attach ourselves to the love of God. So don't give up on the love of God because it's powerful. Its hopes are fadeless. And I encourage you, go back and read the entire uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the Amplified Bible. Read the whole thing. It's, it is really, really good. It says its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. Listen, love never fails. It never fades out. It never becomes obsolete. Or does it come to an end? It's the one constant that makes everything else. Love provides the energy to faith. And listen to me. When love provides the energy of faith, it, it, it causes hope to be fadeless. That's why you go back and study it out. Faith, hope, love, the greatest. You know, you, you get a hold of that. Faith, faith pleases God, but love provides the energy of faith. When people lose their, the energy of their faith and hopelessness tries to set in, and the scripture says hope deferred makes the heart sick, it's because they, they, they've deferred over to I'm not going to attach myself to the love of God. When I'm attached to the love of God, no matter where I'm at in life, listen to me, it, it provides, love is the energy of my faith. Because I know what Jesus did for me. And I know because he did it for me, I can do it for others. If he loved me, then I can love people. If he loved sinners, then I can love sinners. If he loved messed up people, I can love some messed up people. Come on, somebody. Because it ain't where they start, it's where they end in the process of life. And so he takes us all with potential. That's what love does. You may have a knucklehead, uh, knucklehead kid. He probably is a knucklehead kid. Come on, somebody. You know, most mamas can't see it. That's just reality. But I'm just playing. You really can. You just don't want to admit it. Come on. <laughs> and so you look at a child that's a knucklehead. Listen, doesn't mean they're always going to be a knucklehead. There's potential there. There's something working in there. Love has the ability to see those things. And so, you know, you've seen people spend time with others. They're like, man, why do you spend time with them? They're draining you. And sometimes there are people that do. I'm just, that, that's a reality. Can't go, we, we're not called to be the hero. Jesus is the hero. But the love of God has the answer to everything. It, it's, it's not, fi I mean, it's, the, it, 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 it's fadeless. It doesn't go away. It's not obsolete. Listen to me. It did, love is not going away in 2022. Another, another thing I can say is this. If you'll attach yourself to love and the body of Christ will attach itself to the love of God in 2022, I believe you'll see more people reach this year than any other year in the history of the world. I said, I believe you'll see more people reach this year than it. I'm not talking about legalism where we're shouting on Sundays and complaining on Tuesdays. I'm talking about attaching yourself to the love of God, that if God changed me, he can change others. And I'm going to speak for that and not against that. Are you with me here today? Powerful. And so faith works by love. It creates an energy. It's, it's, it's hopes are fadeless. And, you know, it remembers that God's truth. You ever seen anyone truly lose hope? It's a sad thing when you see people walk away from hope. Because a lot of times in, in, in life, people, they, they get disappointed. They go through trials. They go through things. Or even the scripture says, whom the Lord loves, he corrects or chastens. There's going to be times where you're going to see people, God's going to give them opportunity just to make some corrections in their life, just simple corrections. And they think, hey, I... I, this ain't the route God has for me. He's got something else over here. I've seen people walk out of the will of God and different things. I've been one that's done it. Come on, somebody. But I can tell you this. When you embrace the love of God, you take on everything that he has. And he'll correct you. He'll guide you. He'll lead you. He'll give you convictions on who should be in your life and who needs to be out of your life. Come on, somebody. Bad company, the scripture says, corrupts good morals. And God will begin to shift some things and speak some things. And, and, and the whole thing comes down to this is when he speaks and we just listen and be obedient, then things will begin to shift and change. Come on, somebody. And so as we walk that out this morning, I just encourage you, allow the love of God, allow it to lead you to a different place. Allow, allow your faith to be fed by love. Allow your faith to be fed by love. Let the love of God, the constant reminder every day, you attach yourself to it that I'm in the will of God. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. 
all things become new. And just begin to speak the life that comes through God's word that way. Faith is working. It's not fading. Some of you think if you step out, nothing's ever lasted for you. I'm telling you, this is going to last. Come on, somebody. Because it's fadeless. The love of God is fadeless. The love of God is fadeless. It's not going anywhere. It's here. It's working. Come on, God is moving. I'm telling you right now. Sometimes you got to activate it. Sometimes you got to kick off the New Year's cheesecake. Come on, somebody. And activate something that's on the inside of you that God has. Come on, there's where the power is. What's in you that needs to come out today? What's the stirring in you that needs to come out? Some of you, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are like, I have no clue what you're talking about. And that's okay too. But there's something in you that needs to give birth today. There's something in you that needs to, to move forward today. Maybe you feel like you've been stuck in that or you've been, you've been, and I can feel the pain of it. But I'm telling you today, God is very simple. Listen to me. We speak the word of God. We speak out of the abundance of your, 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 your heart, the mouth speaks. The scripture says, what is it that's stirring in you today that needs to come out? And so I just encourage you, right there where you're sitting, just for a minute, think about that. What's the stirring? What's that thing in you that needs to come out? If it's repentance, repent. If it's vision, speak it. If there's hurts or forgiveness that needs to happen, come on, get that. Start speaking it out of your mouth. Deal with those things. Let me speak to your mind because your mind will play with you there. Listen, the love of God's not going anywhere. It's not running out. He's not giving up on you. Speak it. Release it. I believe there's a prophetic edge in the air this morning. Maybe something's stirring and you just, you just, just allow God to deal with it right there where you're at. Come on, Dallas, don't play till 3.30. We're in real good shape today. And Father, we thank you today. We ask you to stir your people. We ask you to heal hearts right now. Father God, we ask you to stir something up that's, that's bigger than we are. Father God, those that have things in their life, and, and, and maybe you're here and your hope has been deferred. I'm telling you, let hope reign in love. Let hope be fed by your love. And we speak hope that's alive, hope that's moving, hope for the future, hope for today, hope for our children, hope for our children's children. And we say that faith worketh by love, Father God. Let your love bring energy to our lives today. Let energy again begin to move in marriages. I sense that strong. There's some of you, your marriage has become stale and there's no movement. And, 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 and you have faith in your marriage, but there's no energy. There's no love. There's no aroma. Let love, come on. Bring the energy back to your marriage. Let love bring the energy back to those moments. And, and I just pray that God will stir that up however he wants to do that this morning. These things are just flowing out of me. And Father, we thank you today that whatever you place in our hands for this year, Lord, we'll walk it out in faithfulness and stewardship. We ask you to touch hearts today, Lord, to rally. Let love be the ingredient. Let love today bring energy to our faith. So that as we walk this thing out moving forward, Father, we're walking by faith and not by sight. Maybe you're here today and every head bowed and every eye closed and you're saying this is just stirring in me. And you said, Pastor, I'm ready to move forward, but I've been speaking against what God's trying to do. And I see that clearly. I've been speaking against what God's trying to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, if you'll if you just raise your hand. We're not going to make a spectacle. I'll see that hand. God bless you. Those hands, God bless you. We're just going to pray and break that thing today. It wasn't even my notes. It just happened during worship. Actually, we're going, let's invite the prayer team to come on up. But Father, we thank you today for those that are willing, Lord. Father, that you've, you, you've prepared us to be vulnerable. You've prepared us to be transparent. You've prepared us to speak. Father, you said that if we confess our faults, it would bring healing to our lives. And we speak, Father God, for those that took the stands, Lord, to raise their hand and are in that place today. Father God, we thank you today that <clears throat> as they move forward, that you'll begin to touch their lives in a whole new way, Father God, that, 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 that they'll speak the life, speak the life that it takes to move forward. 
And Father, we don't want to be those. We repent of being those that speak against what you're doing. Even when we can't see it, we know you're moving, Father. And I pray today that the miracle worker is here. I pray today, Father, that, that, that today you're moving on their behalf, that you're changing hearts. That, Lord, as we start this year in a whole new way, Father God, we believe that we'll do it according to your plan, a better plan, a better covenant. And we thank you for that today, Father God. And we, we lay down every burden. Say this with me. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I give you my heart. I give you my life. But I lay down all of me. And I ask you to fill me up with all of you. Something new, something fresh, something different for this year. In Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. We pray protection. We pray over those that are home today that are sick, that are dealing with COVID, dealing with different things. And we just speak life into your home, life into your bodies, life into your, your marriages, life into every aspect, into your children. And we take authority over the, 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 the epidemic floor that, that's trying to take people out. We just speak life into every home today. We ask you to touch those lives, Father God. We stand in agreement with our church family who's struggling and, 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 and sick in their bodies. And we speak healing and declare by the stripes of Jesus, healing's going into every home today. And we stand with you. We love you. We believe in with you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we celebrate you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand this morning.